chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, as children, we are commanded to obey our parents. And not only should we obey them, but we must also honor them. We are to esteem them highly. And if we do this, God will add more days to our lives. Then he instructs the father on how to deal with his children. He says, don't provoke your children to wrath. In other words, don't cause your children to rebel against you because of your injustice, loss of temper, undue severity, cruelty, favoritism, suppression, sarcasms, ridicules, or misuse or abuse of authority. Instead, train them in the way of the Lord. Now, the word nurture basically means training, denoting spiritual education. The word admonition is instruction that punts out one's responsibilities and duties. Fathers, train your children in the way of the Lord. Fathers, teach your children the good word of God. All right, verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, not with eye service or as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Now, Paul instructed the Christian slaves of his day to be obedient to their masters, and their obedience was to be with fear and trembling. Now, this doesn't mean to be scared or cringing before a master, but means to treat him with respect and dignity. In singleness of your heart means being one-faced, not being two-faced, not smiling in the employer's face and then stabbing him in the back while he, he is away. Such action should never be in the life of a Christian. The servant obedience is to be done as unto Christ. In other words, the slave was to labor for his master as if he was laboring for Jesus Christ. He is now, all, he is now also the slave of Christ, and because of this, he is to look above the earthly master in his attempt to please his master in heaven. Verse 9. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. Now, Paul gives instructions to the masters of slaves. He tells the Christian masters not to take advantage of their positions as masters. They were not to abuse their power or to threaten their Christian slaves. Because they too, like the Christian slaves, have a master to please to answer to. And because in Christ, both the master and his slave were equal. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28 shows that both the bond and free were one in Christ. All right, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Paul says here that we must be strengthened in the Lord and in the power of his might. Equipped with the whole armor of God so that we can successfully war against the devil and all his forces. Look at verse 14. Stand out for having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, Paul lists six pieces of God's armor in this passage. 
Number one, we must have on our spiritual belt, which is the knowledge of the truth of Scripture. Number two, the breastplate of righteousness, which represents a holy character and moral conduct. Number three, preparation of the gospel of peace. In other words, an eagerness or willingness to advance against the devil and to take the fight to him. We take the fight to him when we, when we spread the gospel of peace to the world. Number four, the shield of faith means taking God at his word by believing his promises. Such trust will protect one from doubts induced by Satan. Number five, the helmet of salvation. This is the hope of our salvation. Every believer has to know that their salvation is eternal. Hallelujah. Number six, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Look at verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching down to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Listen, every prayer and supplication must be prayed in the spirit. In the spirit signifies that with the spirit's help, such prayer for divine aid is to be made. Watching down to means being vigilant. In this very matter of prayer. And we are not to pray for ourselves only. But for all saints. Because spiritual combat. Is both an individual. And corporate matter. Look at verse 19. And for me that utterance may be given unto me. That I may open my mouth boldly. To make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador. In bonds. That therein I may speak boldly. As I ought to speak. Paul requested prayer for himself that God would increase his boldness to declare the mystery of the gospel. Now, what is the mystery of the gospel? The mystery of the gospel is that God has also included the Gentiles into his fold. God started with only the nation Israel, but he has since then broken down the walls of partition and have engrafted the Gentiles in. The church is now made up of both Jews and Gentiles. He needed more boldness. You have to understand the time that he was living in. He needed more boldness to preach that because many Jews refused to believe that the Gentiles was on equal footing with them. Glory to God. Look at verse 21. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. As Paul's letter to the Ephesian Christians come to a close, he says, Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. He uses the word grace. Grace is the key word of the epistle. Paul begins the letter with grace in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 2. It is the subject of the epistle in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 7 and 8. Then he concludes the epistle with it. It is a fitting word because it is God's grace which saved us and which sustains us today.